Why do some people have high energy and you don't? Why do they have this energy that lasts for a day, a week, a month, a year, and you find dips that happen throughout your day? Not even your week, but your day. I was exactly in that place. I was like, what's the magic pill? What is the magic? What's the secret sauce? What is it it could possibly be that these people had that I didn't? Because the truth is, I never felt that people were better than me or smarter than me or had ge better genetics. I was always that person like, if I can find it, I can do it. And that's what I set out to do, was to find out exactly what it was that high performance people with high energy, with supercharged energy throughout a day, a week, a month, a year had, that, that I didn't have. And how did they do it so that I could duplicate it or make it better? You know, that, that's really where I was like two years ago, as I sat around looking at my business, looking at my life, and I had these dips during the day, and I'm like, is it caffeine? Is it a supplement? Is it some sort of combination of diet and food? Like, what are they doing throughout their day that I'm not doing? Because whatever it is they have or they know, I need to know. So I set out on this quest in order to find out what exactly it was. And what I found in general was, you know, they all had little differences all over the place. Everybody had, you know, a certain process, a certain system, uh, a certain thing that they would do, you know, maybe even, you know, it's just that one little thing that they're like, nope, I, I, I reference this or I turn my head back and my mindset changes with a click of a, of, a, of a pattern interrupter. And then one thing that I did see throughout the whole entire process was one commonality and that commonality was they all had a routine, a morning routine, regardless if it was three steps, six steps, eight steps, nine steps, 20 steps, no matter what it was, it was routine to them, and it was routine to getting supercharged for their day. And so I set out, and I've tried several. I mean, I don't even know how many I tried. They were countless. I failed at pretty much all of them. All of them left me in failure and overwhelmed and in inability to maintain them over time. And that was tough for me to handle because then I started to express fear and doubt on top of myself. And I'm like, what am I doing wrong? What don't I have? Is this really truly me? And I, I, it wasn't until I found a, a particular system and that was Miracle Morning by Hale, Hale Elrod. Guy's amazing. I'm not gonna, uh, you know, uh, I'm not, not even gonna downplay that. He, he was, at, for about two months, I used his morning routine to just, just push me into a next level with my businesses and my personal life and everything that I was doing with the energy that I had throughout the day. I was like, this is really good. But what I realized with it was it still didn't feel like it was mine. I still felt like I was doing somebody else's routine and I wasn't able to take ownership of it. And clearly as somebody who, who I am, I wanted something that was particular to me. And that is one of the keys that I found in every system and routine that I, 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 every system and every routine that I tried, used, or looked at was one common theme. One, it was made by them, for them, and not for anybody else. Did they all help? Sure they did. Did they work? Yes. But they were all made for themselves, and when I didn't complete it, I felt like I was a failure. I felt overwhelmed if I couldn't do all the steps. I just felt like it wasn't mine. And being an entrepreneur, being a guy that likes to start a business and being a guy that likes to put things together, I wanted something that was mine. I wanted something that I could say fit me, my personality, my quirks, my mentality, my focus, what I personally needed. I wanted specificity. I didn't want somebody's general answer to my specific problem. So what did I do? Well, the first thing I did is I looked at the amount of time I had in the morning. And some days I had an hour, other days I had 30 minutes, sometimes I had two hours. It was all different. And when I had those different times, if I was never able to find the amount of steps that I could do or thought I needed to do within that period of time, it made me feel like okay, well, then I'm only operating at 90% or 80% or 60% or 20%. And it often left me feeling literally as a failure from starting my day because I wasn't able to perform the steps and the standard that I put on myself. That sucked. Let me just be open and honest with that. That sucked. And then I started to think, 
what do I need to do to change that so that I could go into the day and that I could have a full day, a full week, a full month feeling supercharged, having the energy, feeling as though I was ready to attack the world and attack every business that I've been able to and turn them into successful revenue generating monsters that they are. Like, I literally can own it up to having some level of a morning routine. Here's how it all panned out for me. Ugh. So here's how it all panned out for me. I started to take the items that I really loved doing, the things that would supercharge me, the things that I knew that I was personally lacking, and the things that were actually making my life, and the things that were actually producing success in my life, I was able to do those instead of the ones that I felt that were not. Now, I know what you're thinking right now. You're saying to yourself, you don't know better, and that's why you should be doing somebody else's system. And then you're also saying, well, Mike, you're giving me a system, so isn't this your system? Yes and no. No in regards to, I'm going to help you create your own system, your own routine, out of some of the steps that I've learned have been able to supercharge me. Do I think there is a specific order? Yes. Do I think that all nine, ten of them count? For sure. Do I think that you have to do every single one a day? No. But are we going to go through a process here where you're going to be able to look at what you are successful with, what makes you feel good, what you think is missing? 100%. And from there, we're going to be able to create a list for you, create a routine that you'll be able to progress and progress, uh, regress and progress so that you're going to feel supercharged throughout the day, even if you don't get through all of the steps that you want to in the morning. I made this because I don't want you to be searching YouTube and everywhere else, any other other platform, and having to go through the process of what's good for me, what shouldn't I do. I took the 10 steps that are in a lot of different routines. Like none of them have them all, and I want you to be able to create your own routine that's going to supercharge you, your business, your personal life, and your whole entire year. There's also a worksheet that goes along with supercharging your day that you'll be able to look at what you've been able to complete, what worked, and what didn't work for you. So the link down below, click on that, get it so that you can start to begin your supercharged day. Here are the 10 steps every day that I choose from to create a routine to have a supercharged day. Number one is to drink water. Number two is to meditate. Number three is affirmations. Number four is to visualize. Number five is personal development. Number six is gratitude. Number seven is exercise combined with music. Number eight is cold shower. Number nine is superfoods and fuel. Number 10 is a bonus that I'm gonna tell you about that goes along with gratitude. Why did I choose water as my first step? Well, the body is made up of 50 to 60% water to begin with, and we know that we need air, food, water, and hope to survive. So that being said, if we think about it, if we're asleep for eight hours a day, that means for a third of our day, we were actually robbing our body of a nutrient that we need to be able to perform at our highest ability. So what did I need to do? I needed to add water ASAP. I was also at a point during that time, I was stressed out of my mind, like crazy stressed out. You may be that way too right now because you're trying to figure out how to make your business move, how you can get more energy, how you know your relationship can get better, like how your life can get better, and that why you're sleeping during the day or why you're dragging at that point. It's because maybe you're not starting your day with water. You're not giving it what it needs. For me, I was getting red plotches on my face. My face was redder than red. It looked like I had rosacea. It was breaking out. Uh, it was blotchy. And I couldn't figure out what it was. I went to several doctors, dermatologists. They wanted hormone creams. Uh, they wanted me to take a pill. They wanted me to do so much that they wanted. And I just, I, I refused all of it. I'm like, it can't be that because they couldn't figure it out. They're like, oh, it's, it's dermatitis or, oh, it's the foods that you're eating. Oh, it's the, there was so many things that they wanted to decide. And I went down the rabbit hole trying to cure it all except taking medication. And it just didn't work. So I started to say, maybe I'm robbing myself water. I started to look at my water intake and I realized I was drinking way more caffeine than I was drinking water. So there was a point where I started to think, I'm supercharging, I'm energizing my day with caffeine and not with what I needed. 
And so I said to myself, I'm going to go in and I'm just going to start taking water every morning to make sure that my organs move correctly, that process things correctly, that they're operating correctly. My digestive tract is working well because I was bloated. I, the face was red, my stomach was bloated, which I think kind of went hand in hand. So what I did was I started to just put out water every night next to my bed and I would put lemon in it just so that it would alkalize my body. An alkalized body, less bacteria grows inside of that. So that's what I did. Every morning, I had 12 to 16 ounces of water sitting right next to my bed, and I would literally just get up, and I would grab the glass, and I would just drink it all the way down. Step one was complete. It was that simple. It didn't take me any time whatsoever. All there was was for me to drink one glass of water for me getting up. Moving into step two, meditation. Whew. As a guy, I think that most of us think that meditation is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, not our thing, not our jam, or somebody that is has a brain that's racing nonstop, if that's you, or you know, you could be that person, you like, I can't turn the brain off, I'm just go, 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 and that's why I'm here, Mike, because I need to be able to continue to go, 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 go. I didn't want to meditate, I didn't want to sit still, I wanted to move, I'm active, I'm just about as active as you possibly get, me sitting here and doing this video alone makes me antsy, it makes me want to like get out and, and move and do something other than make a video and be contained to a chair. So meditation for me was something that I just thought uh, hippies did and you know weird people did and goofy people did until I did a little bit more research. Um, at the time, I wasn't doing well. Um, I was dealing with some financial issues. I was also dealing with some high stress in, in, in job, like a real big job issue. And all of it was like starting to come down on me, literally, to a point where uh, I, one night, what we believed is I had panic attacks. I started to have these little seizure type situations. And the seizure type situations started with me ripping a medicine cabinet off the wall. I almost had one on an airplane. I had one in, out at night at a bar, and I had one at a, uh, at, a, at a friend's housewarming party. And under none of those circumstances did I feel stressed at all. But what I understood was I had a lot of stress in my life that I wasn't dealing with. And what was happening when I looked at all of that was this world that we live in operates with or without us. And it operates at 300 miles an hour. And when we go to sleep, we clock ourselves all the way back down to, you know, a very low mile per hour. And then we get up and we try to enter a world that is in a 300 mile an hour fast lane. What I learned with meditation was I needed to be able to clear myself so that when I went forward with any of the next steps, I would be able to receive them so then I could take on what's happening in the world at a decent mile an hour. I could take it on because I was ready, because I was supercharged, rather than I'm up, let's do this, and then all of a sudden it's just repeatedly punching me in the face because it's warmed up, it's ready to go, and it's been going. So I started to meditate. And at first I thought it was spooky, it was hard for me to do, and um, I was like, Ugh. I would lay out, like literally on my floor here, and I would just, just lay there and see what I could do. I set a timer, and I'd be like, 10 minutes, let's just see what I can do. And I thought I could do it on my own. I couldn't, you know, it was, it was difficult. So I tried to find a meditation practice that would work for me. And there are guided meditations, and there are unguided meditations. I currently do unguided meditations, and they're as simple as they get. All I do is I breathe in on one and I breathe out on two. I go all the way up to 10 and then I bring all the, all the way back down and I continue that until my 10 minute alarm goes off and I'm done. Now, I know what you're saying, you're like, Mike, what if you miscount? What if you like mess up? I, I couldn't do that, my head would rush. And it's gonna happen. My head goes all over the place too, it really does. But there are moments where I get to two, to four, to six, to eight. There are moments that I'm able to get through all of it. Sometimes I forget a number. If I do, I just start back at one again. I give myself grace because whether it's one or seven, it's still a breath in and it's still a breath out. It's still an ability for me to recheck in and then partially recheck out so that I can get into a groove, get to a point, and then move on to the next step that I choose.
Yes, it takes time at first. Yes, it's a little goofy at first. But the payoff is amazing. The more that you do it, the better you become at it. It's reps. The more reps you do, the better you become. So I started to meditate, and I will tell you this. Ever since I started to meditate, and I am no doctor, and I am not making any claims, the only thing I can say is that I started to handle my stress much better. Uh, I've never had any other issues as far as my seizures, my panic attacks, whatever they were called at that point in time. I still don't know what they are. Um, I have no idea. I've had so many tests, so much blood work, so much everything done. And the only thing I can contribute to it is that I was imploding because I wasn't dealing with anything else that was going in my life. I was trying to run around with supercharge, with caffeine, supplements, you know, uh, lack of sleep, you name it. I was dealing with it in all the wrong ways. And it's another reason why I created Supercharge Your Day so that you could create a system that was good for you and so that it could create whatever momentum and energy you needed in your day. So again, I can't say that, that meditating cured my seizures or anything like that. That is not a claim I'm willing to make, but I am willing to say that it contributed to me being able to handle my stress better and for me to be able to be in a position to best accept the next steps. Because that's what this is all about, is one, understanding why I did it, and then two, selecting the steps that work for you. Step three was affirmations. This was a game changer, like a giant, monstrous game changer. I think all of us go through life, you know, uh, I think all of us go through life wanting to be affirmed, wanting to hear from somebody else how well you did, what you did was great, what you're doing is successful, what it is is good. We love to hear from an outside source, whether it be family, friends, a stranger, and we love a pat on the back. Some of us don't, don't care. We put our head down and we just channel our energy and crush. But in the back of all of those heads that I think that those people don't care, I think they're still hearing it and it's part of the fuel. So affirmations were giant for me. Originally, uh, I used Hal Elrods from Miracle Morning and they were amazing. He wrote perfect ones. So if you want to be able to do those, check those out. They are amazing. There are some affirmations that I put inside of uh, the worksheet that you guys would be able to get. But affirmations was so monstrous for me in a way because I needed to hear it. I literally needed to write it. I needed to speak it. And I needed to hear it. And that was part of the process was me first saying it, like reading it. Then it was speaking it out loud. And then the next one was, I wanted to read it to me in the mirror. I really wanted to hear that, you know what, Mike, you're a badass. You know what, Mike, you deserve some, you know, you deserve the life you have. You deserve the success you're gonna get. I wanted to be able to look myself dead in the eye and know that I stood behind myself. I wanted to do away with any of the negative head chatter that I was having, those conversations that were inward, I wanted to dumb them down. I wanted to get rid of them because I wanted to replace them with new head chatter. Chatter that was positive, chatter that was gonna supercharge me, chatter that was mine that I really truly believed in. So I started to tell myself affirmations. I would read them, I would say them, and then I would look at myself and I would say them with true feeling and emotion because I needed to be able to do that. And I would do them in the morning I would do them at any time in the day whenever I felt like I needed to have them. And then I would make them up on the spot too. I would just make them up. Whatever it was and whatever it had to do with my goal, either for the day, for the week, for the year, I would say them throughout the day if I was in the car, wherever. I just said it. And then I made sure I said them before I went to bed. I wanted to make sure that the last conscious effort that I was making was to affirm myself of what I deserved and the greatness that I had. So that when I woke up, I would springboard off of that. So that's why I do affirmations. That's why affirmations are important to me. And that's why I made them number three. The fourth step is visualization. And why is that so important? Is because we can all see big picture. We all have dreams. We all see and have those conversations that I just talked about in three about head chatter. There's good head chatter, there's bad. But we have these conversations or we have these sights, these visualizations in our head. And we're like, oh, I want to be successful. Oh, I want to be a dad. Oh, I want to be a business owner. Oh, there's all these oh moments. But the question is, and what I was never doing, 
was I wasn't paying attention to the details in the dream. Those details are what allowed me to set goals. Those goals allowed me to have a process. That process is what allowed me to attain my dreams. That is what really broke, broke through to me in such a big way with visualization. I sat back every morning and I thought through this particular process. And this could change for you depending on where you wanted to go and what you wanted to do. And your visualization each day can change. I strongly suggest that you go through this process. For me, it started out outside of my home. I was in the street and I would look at my house. I'd see it off in the, in the distance and I would just see it and I would look at the colors, the yard, the landscape, exactly what the driveway was made of, whether or not my house had gates, whatever it is, because it did. Honestly, that, that was my visualization. I've always wanted gates. Uh, and I looked at that and I wanted to look at every minor detail that was involved in that. And then I would just slowly walk myself up into that house walk up the driveway and I would smell. What did it smell like? Did it smell like fresh cut grass? Did it smell like, you know, uh, sea air? I wanted to be by the ocean. That's my ideal world, is being by the water. So I went and I would just smell these things. These, I want to make these things happen. This is my dream. And if I don't smell ocean air, I'm going to end up living somewhere else. That was not acceptable to me. I would go through that. I would look, you know, the garage door would be open. Do I own a car? Do I own a truck? What kind? What color? Four doors, two doors, all of this. And this all happens rather quickly sometimes with me. And I would take only 10 minutes to visualize because sometimes I'd spend more time in the garage. Sometimes I would spend more time in the kitchen or with the kids or wherever I'm at of the vision, I would spend more time, but only 10 minutes. I'd walk into my house. I know the exact floor plan of my house. I know the exact type of furniture that I have in my house. I know the way my kitchen looked, I know everything. Whether or not I had a wife, some kids, what the view looked like straight out to the backyard. I would then look and I'd walk into my bedroom and I would look at myself and then I'd watch myself wake up. How I would wake up, what did I look like? Was I fit, was I not? Was I big, was I small? Uh, you know, Did I sleep with or without a shirt? I know it sounds funny, but I did it, straight up. From there, I'd watch myself walk across the, the kitchen. I'd watch myself get coffee. You know, I'd watch myself walk to the backyard. All of this detail, everything, colors, tile, flooring, wood, walls, height of the ceilings. I'd sit down, I'd be out back. That's how I'd start my day, every single day. Could I smell that ocean air again? Could I hear the ocean? Was I looking at the ocean? That was process. That was my visualization. From there, I had a visualization of coming back inside. Where was my office? Was I going to it? Was, I, was it in home? How was I helping people? What did my businesses look like? What was I doing throughout the entire day in that office to help other people? How was I serving people? How was I helping? What was I doing? It was all visualized for me. Start to finish. And again, like I said, some days I didn't get through it all but I made sure that I visualized as much as I possibly could. And if there was a specific goal at the time, I visualized what I was doing around that particular goal, what that success looked like, smelt like, felt like, and heard like. Heard like, probably not a word, but what did, how did I hear with the goal? It was really big for me. So to visualize what you want, going, going back on this, to visualize what you want allows you to see it, allows you to be able to set goals, and if you're able to set goals, you're able to create a process. The results are in your process. It's not in your goals, because if you pay attention to all of your goals, you won't pay attention on how you get there. If you pay attention on how, the goal will come automatically. Processes. Number five is personal development. I think that we're all in agreement that we don't know everything, and that we could always use an ability to figure out how to learn a skill, learn more to make better decisions. We understand that piece. But well, why is personal development important in the morning and after meditation? Well, we've meditated, we have said what we want, we have visualized what we want. Now we're going to put our mind in a place so that we are ready to get what we want. Because 
If you're not thinking correctly, if your mindset is in a negative state going out the door, or if you're already complaining about the news or what's going on, that's where your brain is going to be for the rest of the day. That's the standard that you're going to set. That's the place that you're going to be receiving and giving information from. So personal development first thing in the morning is really about exercising and educating the mind so that it is ready to, and prepared to do great things and to be supercharged throughout the day. Don't you want to enter this world supercharged so that as it's crazy and there's 300 miles an hour, you are already hit the supercharged button with your brain as everything is coming at you. You meet them with equal force. So... Personal development was big. I started with audio. You know, I'm an audio person. I'm not big on books. I'm not big on, you know, uh, it's, I don't know why I'm not big on books. I'm a visual learner, and I understand that, and I didn't do well in school. I didn't. I graduated 278 out of 356 because every time a teacher taught something, I was like, mm, yeah, yeah, soccer. Let's play soccer. That's all I wanted to do was play sports, and, you know, I just didn't, I wasn't able to retain any information off a book. But once I started to be able to get, to get pictures, and then, but once I was able to start to get pictures and video and sound, where it was audio, I was really able to springboard myself into like massive education and massive information retention. It, that really was a big piece for, for me to be able to learn. Because ultimately, and I, I'm not sure, but I, I'm willing to bet there's a lot of you out there that know that you're not unintelligent, that you are intelligent, that for some reason you're just not learning what you need to learn and processing what you need to be able to process at that particular time. But you're like, wow, I know I'm intelligent. Why is this not sticking with me, but it's sticking with, you know, Tom and Larry and Susan, you know, it may be just that you're a visual learner. So I was audible. That was big for me. YouTube was big for me. Uh, and I also elevated my game by getting around people that had, you know, real high level conversations that would educate me and challenge me around the way my brain was. So that is my very first thing that I would, you know, would do after visualization was personal development. Step six is grat gratitude and journaling. What I realized was I still had a bunch of stuff in my head and I needed to also be grateful at the same time. So what I would do is I would get out a journal and I would just write, write anything I wanted to. Sometimes I would just brain dump that it would be ideas, whether it be what I wanted to do, what I wanted to achieve, uh, you know, what I wanted to say to somebody, anything. I would just write anything I wanted. Uh, you know, I just put pen to the paper and I just wrote furiously, like, just, and I just dumped whatever was in my brain trying to get rid of all of it as it came out. That was like the first thing, just so that I could journal and begin to just get out what was inside my head. And then I would always end that journaling process with being grateful, like two things or two people that I was grateful for today, that I'm going to be grateful for, that I am grateful for today, and then two things and two people that I was grateful for yesterday. Because I always wanted to make sure that I looked back upon what yesterday was like and bring the greatness of yesterday into today to create momentum continuously throughout my year. It was about being grateful, and I knew that I was. I mean, I'm not a jerk, and I'm not somebody that's like, oh, I'm not grateful for anything that I've been able to achieve, no matter where I was at life. And often we get caught up in that. We don't realize how grateful we should be and how good we really do have it, because we're always in this world of looking at what I don't have, what I want, what, I, what I'm going to be achieving rather than what I have right here, right now, what I had yesterday. Because there's a lot of people out there that don't have what I have, what you have. There's always somebody else who wishes they could walk in your shoes for a little bit. So in that respect, I had to sit down and I had to sit and say to myself, what am I grateful for? And who are they? You know, who am I grateful for? And you know, what am I going to be grateful for today? So that I put an intentional uh, movement towards that ability to be grateful. So I knew that I would, I would attack the day being grateful for those certain things and people. 
Number seven is exercise and music. They kind of go hand in hand. Um, if you're that person that wants to get a morning workout in, to get your full fledged, full fledged, you know, workout in, go from, you know, if you, it's a 30 minute workout, get it done. If it's 40, 60, whatever it is, get your workout in because you want to be firing up that dopamine, that serotonin, that high energy, that caloric burn, the metabolism. You want it all just to be going as far as going into the day. If you're not one of those people and you're like, ah. I don't have time. Like that would mean I have to get up at 3 a.m. or you know, I just I gotta run out the door. I'm getting the kids ready. I don't know what to do. You're gonna still want to take at least 10 minutes. Do something. I put something in, in the in, into the worksheets that said you know 10 squats, 10 sit-ups, 10 push-ups. It was just a, a, a thing of 10 so that the blood would pump in the body so that you would feel powerful. The ability to move has so much power to it. And I think we take that for granted a lot, that we have this incredible ability to move so much of our body, and that being able to do the, some basic exercises and a basic flow that will remind you of the power that you have and the power that you can potentially get is an incredible way to enter the day. The other is music. I don't know about you guys, but music to me, I love it. I mean, I don't want to go to a bunch of concerts. I'm not that guy. I'm not, I don't feel it. And, you're like, I'm, I'm not front row in a concert, but I definitely, when I have certain music, it reminds me of some great times that I've had in my past, some high school days, you know, like when I got my first car, what was my favorite song? Like, what was my soccer walkout songs? You know, what was playing during warm-ups? Just, just what would I play in the garage when playing hockey or, you know, on a school bus or, or the times that I had great as an adult in college and I parted my brains out and I did some crazy stuff, whether it made buddies and girlfriends and whatnot. Music really is a great reminder of what you should be grateful for, what's great in your life, and it's a great dopamine and serotonin rush for you. So whatever it may be, no matter what kind of music it is, spend some time on a playlist. Spend some time putting some effort in what you like. Don't worry about what I like, what somebody else likes or doesn't like. Just get what you do, what juices you, what supercharges you. Put it in your brain and enjoy it. 10 minutes, like you may even want to sing. I don't know if that's you, do it. I, it doesn't bother me, not one bit, but go for it. Let it be known that that music has an ability to add an extra supercharge to you because you know this. Whenever in your car, you got nobody around, you're like, Turn the volume up and you're like jamming, whether it's to an 80s hair band, a country song, or if it's jazz, whatever it may be, you are in the zone. So why wouldn't you place this in the beginning of your day and then use it as a tool throughout the day? So whenever you're not feeling supercharged, music. Get it throughout the day. Number eight. What I like to do is like we all got a shower every day, right? I mean, that's, I hope we do at least. I shower every day. Okay, most of the days I do. Some days I don't. If it's, uh, you know, I don't know, I live by the beach. If I'm jumping in the ocean, then I kind of sort of sometimes think it's okay not to. But in general, we shower every day. What I started to do and started to watch is I started to watch a lot of my friends who were crazy workouters. And a lot of, when I would go to CrossFit, one of the incredible things that they would do is they would do cold baths. And it would just be something to bring down the inflammation, the swelling, to start. It was almost a meditation because it was about breathing and understanding your body. And it was about bringing inflammation down. So as humans, no matter what it is, we're always bringing trauma to the body. Whether it's exterior stress, uh, interior stress, walking, running, talking, moving like I am now. It is trauma to the body, which is causing some level of inflammation both internally and externally, which means we're swelling all over the place. And if we can bring our bodies down to a non-fight or flight process, we're going to be able to achieve, we're going to be able to receive what out there in the day a lot better. We're going to be able to be supercharged throughout our day because we're not going to be inflamed. We're not going to be fighting something or flighting from something because we're able to come in a little less inflamed. So how does that happen? Because you're like, Mike, I don't have a tub, and I'm not getting in the water every day, and I don't have this amount of ice, so what are you going to be able to do? Here's how I do it. I get into my shower. I take my normal everyday shower, no matter what it is, whatever temperature. You like a hot one? Go for it. You, you like a warm one? That's your, that, that's your jam. 
the last minutes before I get out of my shower, I start to slowly decrease the temperature. I don't put my head under the water, but I slowly, slowly decrease temperature until it gets to a point where I'm uncomfortable, like really uncomfortable, where I have to begin to breathe through it. At that point, I try and stay in as long as I possibly can. Two minutes is a pretty good variable for you to set a standard for you in the beginning and just go there. I mean, this is cool. Obviously, there's no temperature gauge in the shower. So you're going to be able to go to whatever your standard is in that particular moment of the day. So reduce your inflammation by taking about two minutes of reducing the temperature in your shower down to an extremely cold level whatever level that you can tolerate to reduce the inflammation in your life so that you can go out into your day and become supercharged and inflame your day rather than yourself. Number nine, we talked about water and why that's essential to you. And then we said we needed air, hope, and food. So obviously I need to start the day with some level of food. And my very first thing that I do is I make sure that I'm having some level of superfoods, like I, whatever that amount is. I personally have my own shake that I do, and I, I, I jam pack as many superfoods as I possibly can get into it. I have several recipes. I'll leave those uh, so that you can get a link to them and you guys can check those out. But for me, superfoods for a supercharged day were as extremely essential. And the reason I went superfoods, and I was like, well, why not protein? Superfoods for me meant I had a various amount of super energy, super foods, super vital. I could just keep going super, super, super inside my body in a very short period of time so that I can go out into the world and continue on throughout my day. I wanted my superfoods. Do I do them multiple times a day? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I feel that I am undernourished. Sometimes I feel that I'm lacking. And sometimes I feel like I missed it in the morning and I got to make it up at another time. Again, like I said, going back to these steps, which is really great, is that you can change it. If your superfood shake doesn't work in the morning, change it up. Take it in the afternoon. You know, do it at night. Find out where it supercharges you, but make sure that you're going above and beyond. Because what I realize is that by supercharging with foods, especially ones with super vitamins and minerals, probiotics, prebiotics, all this stuff, I was giving myself a greater ability to have this high level of energy to be able to achieve whatever I wanted to do. I no longer wanted to dip throughout the day, and I no longer wanted regret. And be like, wow, one simple shake, one simple shake a day could change the ability of me being supercharged or not. That was a big deal to me. Change my health, change my life, change my digestive system, change so much with 12 ounces of a shake. That was big. So I would highly suggest you get on some sort of superfoods, whatever it may be. I have mine that, that I believe in. You can have yours that you believe in. And I firmly believe whatever direction you go will probably fit for you. And if it doesn't, then ask for a suggestion. Ask me what mine is. Ask me which way you want to go. At, you know, ask away. That's what this is about, is like formulating something that's going to work for you. So superfoods, supercharged. My last one is bonus. My last one goes back into the gratitude and it goes back into the journaling. So when we gratitude, we said there were two things and two people that we were grateful for yesterday and today as well. So that is four people. The one thing I knew that I was doing, I was working extremely hard and I was focused on me, my goals and serving my customers, my clients, as well as my team and everybody that was supported by me that I had to show up for. So those four people that I was grateful for, I realized that I wasn't supercharging them and that I wasn't showing up for them and that I wasn't showing how grateful I was to have them in my life, which meant as grateful as I was, my relationships with them was getting weaker and weaker and weaker every day that I didn't show up and show my gratitude to them. My number 10 is, and this can be done at any point in time in the day, you know, whether it's in the morning, at night, wherever it is, you gotta reach out to those people. You gotta start conversation. It doesn't have to be, I'm grateful for you, and I just wanted to call. It's just, how are you? What you up to? It's being invested in those four people every single day, and it just continues to flow for 365 days a year, because those people are gonna change every day. 
but at least two days in a row you're going to reach out to people and you're probably going to reach back out to some of them but I want you to make sure that you're doing it consciously because a world without any friends and family and nobody in it is a really empty world. It's a world based purely on work. And as great as your job may be, it's not going to give you what you need to have a supercharged life. Because work is one thing, life is a whole different thing. And you're going to need that in your life to sustain a level of being supercharged day after day after day. Your work is not going to bring you that. What goes on in the rest of the world, as far as your friends and your family and what you're truly grateful for, is. So to sum all this up, and you got the 10, you know, you, you, I was up front and let you know exactly how I did, and that's the reasons I did them in that order so that I could mix them up. Here's what you can do. There is a worksheet that's going to allow you to look at all 10. And you'll be able to check off whether or not you did 2, 3, 5, doesn't matter what order, just whether or not you did them. There's also going to be a point where you're going to say, you're going to look back on the day before and say whether or not you were supercharged. You're going to start to see patterns the more often you do this, the more consistent you are with doing some of the steps. You're going to say, well, I felt day, this day, I didn't feel it on that day. I felt it on Monday, I didn't feel it today. You're going to start to see that you did certain things in those days that really truly helped you feel supercharged and it may be four steps it may be five steps it may be all ten steps you may have performed one of those steps later in the day but getting those ten steps in somewhere is really going to help you and if your routine is four steps then it's way better than you were before and think of it this way from four you can go to five five you can go to six and six you can continue on and if not, and if it's too much, and it's just something that makes you uncomfortable and is actually slowing your day down, then get rid of it. I can only tell you that these are 10 steps that I use to pull from to create my morning routine so that I feel as though I accomplished something. And that something is always towards being supercharged. Rather than, I only did nine of these. I only did six of these steps that Mike suggested. There's no right or wrong. There's no good or bad. There is just what works for you. I don't want you to leave overwhelmed, and I don't want you to feel like a failure because whatever your morning routine is, it's very specific to you and what you need. Feel free to add to this. If you find steps 11, 12, 13, and 14, add to it. A strong suggestion is, is to create a routine that is supercharging you and keep track whether or not you do feel supercharged. If you don't, then you know something in there has got to be tweaked or you've got to get rid of it and abandon it altogether. There it is, guys. I'm excited for you. I'm excited for you to build your own supercharge, your own superpower to your day. If you have any questions, reach out to me. I'm really good at responding on social media. Tag me up. Let me know what you're doing. Let me know what you changed. Show me that you're doing it. Just let me know that you are living a supercharged life. Thanks so much for watching this video in your quest to find out what the fuel is that will supercharge your day, day after day. I've got 10 steps total that I choose from. I don't do them all every single day, but I do choose a portion of those that make it specific to me and my fuel. I hope that you will find the same. If you have any questions about any one of these steps or how to supercharge your day, comment down below, hit me up on any of my social media, as well as in the description, I put where you can sign up, where you can get the worksheets for supercharge your day, the rest of the playlist for the videos, and some affirmations that are out there. So please let me know, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. You know the deal. I wish I could point it in which direction it really needs to be, but the, the subscribe button is extremely important because it helps you get the content that I create on a daily basis that could possibly change your life and supercharge your day.